Hi, and welcome to Healthy Living. My name is Cheryl McWilliams. I'm with you today on this show, and in the studio are two very special guests. Dr. Galen Johnson is a surgeon, and Dr. Timothy Howe is an internal medicine specialist. He's also the medical director of wellness and the medical director of the diabetes program at Parkview Adventist Medical Center. Welcome. Thank you. So today on the show, we're talking about something that we've never talked about before. It's, it's, it's a new topic for me, and I think it's going to be a new topic for, for many of the folks who join us on the show. Um, we're looking at genetics, and specifically epigenetics. And this is particularly interesting because I am expecting, and I have a whole long list of genetic things that I am at risk for, that my child is at risk for, and I understand that maybe there's hope beyond the genetic code that we inherit. So tell me a little bit about genetics and then tell me what in the world does this epigenetic thing mean? Well, I think most people understand what genetics is. Genetics have to do with your genes. And of course, this has been a field of a lot of interest for quite some time. The uh, human genome study identified the human genes back in the 90s, actually, found out that we have over 20,000 genes that control most of the activities of our body, how we develop and how we resemble our parents and things of that kind. Uh, the amazing thing is that uh, genes are, of course, very small. Uh, we have 46 chromosomes in our, each one of our cells, and those, uh, all of genes are attached to those, uh, to those chromosomes. If you were to stretch out a, a chromosome, it would stretch out to about six feet. But if you put all your genes in, in, I'm told it would reach from here to the moon. That's a lot of material in it's this little body. a lot body. of material. And it's, the other thing is it's very small and it's very delicate. Sometimes we think that we're sort of made out of cast iron, but realize that this body that we live in or that we are is a fine bit of machinery that takes some care to make sure it works well. Okay. Now, epigenetics, for many years, people thought that, you know, genes determined everything. Genes had to do with cancer. Genes had to do not only with your heredity, but a lot of illnesses and so forth. And that's true. But as they have gotten into the genome study, they found that there are other influences that are beyond genes or another term above genes. And this is where the term epigenetics came from. Epigenetics is a system that where there are messenger molecules and so forth that tell our genes how to behave. Huh. And this makes a lot of differences to the kind of life experiences and health that we have. Okay. So what is it, how, how, do, how do I tell my genes how to behave? What do I do? <laughs> <laughs> well, fortunately, we don't have to know exactly how they work as long as we provide the right conditions for our genes. Actually, everything that happens, our, our health and our well-being, determines a great deal on the environment in every individual cell. That environment has a lot to do, or what we do has a lot to do with that environment. Our diet, our activity, the substances we use, the adequacy of uh, necessary elements that we take into our body and so forth. So. The interesting thing is, even though this is an interesting subject that, that we're finding has a lot to do with the kind of life expectancy and so forth we're going to have, it all comes back to doing a lot of those very elemental things that have to do with good health. So what I think I hear you saying is, <clears throat> I inherit my, my genetic code. I, I either chose my parents well or I didn't. And uh, whatever that genetic code is, I inherit it. But the way I live my life, the choices I make, the food I eat, what I drink, my sleep, all of the choices that I make in my everyday lifestyle affects how those genes express themselves? That's right, Cheryl. And, and furthermore, you uh, mentioned that you're expecting. Yeah. What you do right now determines to a large degree the epigenetic expression of your offspring. Okay, lay the, lay the pressure on. <laughs> okay, so 
And you know, it's true for your husband too, because he provided half of the genetics for your child. And prior to conception, his diet, his stress level will determine the epigenetic expression of that child to a large degree. And the same is true for you, not only during pregnancy, but prior to conception, the way you were eating. Now the good news is this. You've told me that your diet growing up and the diet your mother and father ate and the way they lived is much differently, different Absolutely. than the way you're living now. Your tendency toward diabetes and your tendency toward obesity is unlikely to be passed on to your child just like it, it wasn't <laughs> passed on to your first child right. uh, because you're living a different way than your parents did. Uh, it's very interesting. This has been shown clear in studies uh, with rats and mice. Nova did a, a beautiful uh, presentation on this. You can look it up on the internet. You just type in Nova Epigenetics. That's E-P-I Genetics. And they have a really slick uh, video on this. But it's, it's very interesting. Now the good news is this. If you did a terrible job as a parent, and your kid inherited this really bad epigenetics. They are not set for life. Their diet that they choose as a young person, as a young adult, can also reprogram those epigenetics to a better form. So while it's important what choices a mother and a father make, at conception and for the you know time before conception and during pregnancy you're not doomed you can change your gene expression to a better form and that's really hopeful